Yes, so good evening, dear survivors of day two of the conference, right? Добрый uh, вечер. What happened with my slides? I don't know. Uh, so today uh, we are here to answer the question, do we have a chance after all to get some real um, cross-platform development possibilities? At least I want to believe this. Um, my name is Maxim Salnikov. I came to you from Oslo, Norway. I do lots of stuff uh, around PWA and uh, I run meetups and conferences. What could be useful for you from this slide is my Twitter handle. Why? Because I will post this slide deck right after my session and it contains lots of uh, references to quite useful resources regarding PWA. Okay, so talking about cross-platform development, it's impossible to avoid the discussion about mobile platform. Why? Because it has some advantages, 2.5 billion. And uh, what kind of advantages are they? Actually, it's all of us, owners of smartphones. These devices which um, can run something um, similar to app or mobile app itself. Uh, and uh, back to 2016, mobile devices started to consume more internet uh, than our desktops. So what, cames, what comes first to our minds when we hear about mobile device? Of course, some kind of app, right? And most likely this is native app. There are some, I don't need this cursor. There are some challenges. Uh, while we create these kind of applications. First, we have two major mobile platforms, right? So we need at least, uh, at least two uh, development teams or like to, to order from two companies or so, so on. Um, yes, we have some uh, possibilities to create something cross-platform, but everything looks like a kind of trade-off, right? We have to find a compromise between, for example, speed and quality or cost or so. And app stores. Um, you might say, yes, let's just take a template or like mobile app generation service. There are plenty of, but uh, at least uh, Apple's app store started to ban this kind of apps because, you know, there are too many similar apps uh, with uh, not so decent quality. It all uh, brings us to expensiveness of the development. And uh, if we continue the discussion about app stores, it's not so shiny actually there. Um, lots of apps are there just useless. Uh, and folks just stopped to use uh, these app stores, uh, they have enough apps on their phones, so regular user doesn't install any apps. And if you created this app, if you pushed it to the store, and if you were lucky to get approved there, it's quite uh, challenging to get users. Uh, and yes, there are some super popular apps and actually they share the majority of users there. It all brings us to expensiveness of getting new users. Okay, let's have a look what web could give us in that sense. Why not to try this uh, web tech? And by the way, who remembers the name of this uh, old technology we used uh, for getting web experience on mobile devices? Yes, that. WAP, yes, it's uh, WAP, and uh, uh, the language was called WML, something like this. Good, uh, but back to 2010, we had this uh, cover story uh, on a very serious uh, magazine called Wired, and actually um, its editor-in-chief told that uh, we give up. We will not use uh, WAP on our mobile devices, and um, the idea was if you need something, there is an app for this. And of course, it was like native app, right? Next, uh, two years later, we got this quote. Who can say me who told this? Yes, please. Yes, it was Mark Zuckerberg. After um, Facebook uh, tried to bring some hybrid app to mobile instead of like native, native one, they failed and uh, he was set by the web experience. 
Yes, so it was old times. Now let's move forward and have a look what we have today in the web. And times are different, right? First, uh, browser vendors, they constantly uh, contribute to the speed of uh, JavaScript. And all the main news about uh, JavaScript engines are about, hey, we increased the performance on super cents. We uh, got kind of breakthrough, and now we are 30% faster, or something like this. So all the news are around this. Uh, finally, we are lucky to get all this um, nice set of uh, hardware features of on our mobile phones, different types of, of sensors, media possibilities, uh, and so on and so on. That's really cool because this small device contains lots of interesting po hardware possibilities. Driver for the business, authentication and payment. Uh, and we have, or will have really soon, really cool APIs in production that will help us a lot uh, to implement this kind of experience. We cannot say about uh, mobile web app as an app without quite deep integration of uh, our, say, set of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and maybe some images with operating system, right? And of course, of course, it's, uh, we don't want to rely on the network anymore, right? Uh, let's all forget that web is something uh, related to internet, to connection, and that we, uh, we have to be connected to use this app. For the last two points, uh, respond uh, methodology or just a modern way to build the apps called progressive web apps. So this will be our main focus for today. Uh, but before we dive into PWA, uh, let's have a look uh, on the point number two, uh, devices hardware. There is a really cool website uh, called uh, pretty obviously what web can do dot today. And I promise you will be surprised uh, by the number of um, APIs available in your browser today. So if you open this um, URL, you will uh, get this kind of checklist what's available for this browser you just watching at. And yeah, there are lots of different interesting things. Back to PWA. What is it, after all? Um, there is a classic Wikipedia article with um, classical 10 like properties or characteristics of progressive web app. Uh, but today we'll go a different way, and let's have a look what folks from uh, MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, um, created in terms of definition. And I'm um, proud and um, happy to take part in finding the proper words, so it's our collaboration. Um, so progressive web apps are just uh, apps that use uh, modern APIs of uh, modern or evergreen browsers. Uh, we use this uh, in the way of progressive enhancement to deliver cross-platform experience. And it's all, of course, uh, for our customers, for our users, for our clients, you name it. Uh, we want to deliver some experiences for them never um, available on the web before. OK, I mentioned cross-platform many times today. Let's have a look at current status. What do we have now? And first, let's list these platforms, right? So first, browser. It's, um, yeah, we can uh, pretend that this is a platform, right? So we are about web apps, after all. And this is the source of uh, these web apps. Uh, mobile, this was uh, igniter of whole progressive web apps idea. Why? Because um, these devices are still a bit less performant than our desktops or laptops, right? And uh, they quite often connected to much weaker networks, uh, like cellular ones, or maybe not connected at all. So we don't have the privilege to always use uh, fast Wi-Fi like we do in our offices or at home. On the other hand, these small devices are equipped with decent set of hardware features. I already named some of them. Desktops. Uh, we often forget about this platform uh, in discussions about progressive web apps, but why not to have uh, our web app as a first-class citizen on uh, our desktops and laptops? That's cool. So let's list some logotypes. 
I'm really happy to say that all major browsers are there in at least basic support of uh, features needed to run progressive web app. Two major platforms uh, in mobile universe is also there, and that happened not so long time ago, maybe a maybe couple of months. For the desktop, we have uh, Microsoft, who is uh, pioneering here on Windows 10. You run your web app, progressive web app, as uh, like real, real uh, Windows app. Uh, same for Chrome OS, and uh, soon, it's uh, hidden un uh, behind the flag at the moment, we will have the possibility to install Progressive Web App as a uh, first-class citizen app, even on our Mac and uh, Windows platform via Chrome browser. Uh, one more, say, uh, quasi or proxy platform is uh, the place where we distribute apps. Despite uh, one of the ideas of uh, PWA is to get rid of this hassle with uh, all kinds of uh, stores, uh, Microsoft is pioneering here again, and um, in their Microsoft Store, you'll find some um, apps which are web apps, but uh, you, go, you can go and install them like, uh, like regular native uh, window, Windows app. And uh, for example, there is uh, Twitter Lite, there is uh, Skyscanner, and a uh, dozen more uh, quite, uh, quite well-known brands. Cool, uh, let's list shortly uh, what it brings to our users, to our customers. First, as I mentioned, um, we bring our apps offline. So you don't rely anymore on uh, HTTP cache. You have everything under full control, and uh, you have full offline experience. Next, if you're online, you can remind uh, your customers, your users, to, to do something, to do some actions uh, via web push notifications, something that was not available for the web before, and many, many other cool things. So Service Worker API, which is responsible for all this, is uh, not limited to only this uh, networking and push notification magic. Um, believe me, there are many interesting things you can uh, implement. And to wrap everything, to create an app from our set of uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, we use simple JSON file following web app manifest, which actually does this convertation. Why it's important to to get this feeling of the app. Maybe because of this, uh, just have a look. Um, audience versus uh, loyalty. Audience of uh, mobile web apps three times larger than uh, native ones, but, but folks spend lots of time in uh, native apps, like 20 times more. Why? Because you have this uh, app under your finger, right, in form of icon, uh, because this uh, app uh, can remind about itself by sending some notification, right? So we actually almost always uh, keep something uh, open on our smartphones. And this is why it's really important to keep this possibility for our web apps. Um, it was for our customers. What, did, what does it bring for us, for, for developers, uh, obviously? Um, JavaScript, uh, we can argue about uh, like this, uh, say, syntax and types and so on, but still it's, it's a very expressive language. And uh, in uh, collaboration with HTML5 and all these latest and greatest CSS features, it gives us really cool uh, possibilities to develop really nice apps. Uh, JavaScript tooling, uh, for me, it's definitely the best on the market. All these, you know, uh, uh, IntelliSense, linters, variety of, of, of tools making our lives, uh, developers, uh, easier. And huge community. Community, after all, um, I don't know, this, this is definitely the largest one, and this is not just my suggestion. This is uh, confirmed by Stack Overflow Developer Survey for this year. So first, um, I've seen somewhere that um, like overall number of developers of uh, like programmers in the world is uh, like 20 21 million was the calculation from CEO of uh, github from from the last year and on this chart we see that like 70 percent of them and if you switch to uh, professional develops uh, it's even better picture like more than seven 
70%. Uh, they uh, know, or at least they pretend that uh, they know JavaScript, right? And by the way, uh, so these are top 10 and uh, maybe like 12 or 13th, uh, it's TypeScript, which is which is quite related, right? And and by the way, uh, um, uh, for the previous back to the previous slide about expressiveness and tooling, actually, our days you can. Uh, you can use not only JavaScript to have JavaScript apps uh, as a result, right? So we have this power of translation. We can use TypeScript. Uh, we can use uh, Dart. Uh, many other options. OK, but uh, we have all these nice uh, frameworks, which uh, gives us uh, the way to create kind of cross-platform experience uh, right today, right? Uh, just uh, name a few. Uh, Cordova, PhoneGap, NativeScript, uh, React Native, Electron, Ionic to some extent, right? So uh, what, uh, what with them? Sooner or later, they will just uh, disappear because we will not need them, right? Uh, we have JavaScript, which is uh, like native app for this platform for this uh, operating system, for this browser, for, for this everything. And uh, we'll have a new generation of tooling. So I believe um, uh, many of you heard about Workbox. Uh, it's kind of uh, industry standard at the moment to automate your um, uh, PWA implementation. It contains lots of uh, features uh, straight out of the box. So basically, you kind of implement uh, quite complex uh, features like uh, runtime caching and offline analytics, many interesting things, by just providing some configuration. It's even hard even to name this uh, coding. Plus, uh, it's real killer features that it gives you a possibility to extend your own service worker. It doesn't uh, bind you to always use this generated one. It's uh, created and maintained by folks from Google. Folks from Microsoft created PWA Builder, which also equipped with nice set of uh, um, helpers for us, for developers. It uh, builds, uh, uh, validates, and, uh, and so on and so on. But its killer feature is this one. You just provide an URL of your progressive ABAP, and it generates uh, native projects for you if you need uh, some uh, functionality which is not available at the web platform yet or um, in a specific um, browser or in a specific uh, operating system. You just get your project for uh, Android Studio or for Xcode, and it generates like already ready app for uh, Windows Store and just go and compile it and push it to the App Store. And this is not just Siri. Uh, there is um, really cool uh, article um, about how to do this, do this in reality. Uh, do we have some challenges in this um, way? Yes, of course, we have plenty of. First, and uh, maybe it's uh, most annoying for us, for developers, uh, breaking changes. And both um, small ones and uh, serious ones. Um, what kind of uh, breaking change um, is introduced on, on this picture? Actually, for me, um, it's good illustration of both minor and uh, major. So this is all about um, how we add our progressive apps to the home screen. And the minor one is uh, the browser. Browser vendors, they constantly uh, tune some uh, heuristics uh, which uh, makes this installation possible at all before we can uh, get some control as uh, developers. So this is minor one for me, and the major one was introduced recently at uh, Google I.O. Um, this um, installation prompt will not be shown uh, at all if you, uh, as a developer, doesn't support some, doesn't provide some, some code for, for this. Like uh, before that, uh, we were fine with just providing web app manifest and service worker, and browser will handle everything automatically. Uh, this uh, installation prompt will pop up. Not now anymore. Next. Um, it's really living standard, and uh, browser vendors, they still find trying to find um, best uh, 
uh, say user experience, and sometimes it goes in the form of favoring or disfavoring some features. For example, a couple of weeks ago, folks from uh, Firefox uh, say, hey, be happy, we uh, introduced a new feature you can uh, ban all installation prompts, uh, all, all uh, registration prompts for all push notifications for all websites at all, just one click, one checkbox. Does it cool? Definitely not for developers. Um, so just imagine that some uh, annoying website with a bad, say, user experience introduced uh, this um, obtrusive um, the in the uh, prompt to um, ask folks to register for push notifications, and uh, folks were sad and told no, never again. And then our shiny website with cool UX, with all these uh, um, nice techniques, it's automatically banned. You can never show this prompt, so you will never get push uh, notifications ready for your customers. So it's kind of open discussion at the moment. Um, and of course, of course, support for current features um, uh, for, from different browsers, platforms, and versions of browsers. So you see on this picture um, that uh, first PWA, uh, it contains uh, lots of different APIs, right? And even Service Worker API is not monolithic. It, it contains, uh, say, sub-objects, sub-APIs, and level of support is different. Y I believe you can easily imagine what is where, right? Um, uh, yeah, by the way, th this is this uh, article, how to deal with um, current lack of support of some uh, features in some browsers. Uh, you remember PWA Builder I mentioned before. Um, so yes, it, it's real. You can use PWA Builder. You can um, get your native project, and uh, you can push it to app stores. Then this kind of problem will be not a big problem for you, right? Of course, it will requ require some extra efforts anyway. Um, on a strategic level, uh, what I'm concerned about is uh, lack of uh, roadmap from uh, all browser vendors. And who knows which um, way will these uh, folks take tomorrow, right? So my dream is uh, to have something like this. I definitely don't want to finish our discussion on this challenge section, right? So this is why. Let's have a look at some success stories. Of course, there are many of, and uh, uh, let me list some projects that are um, like from, um, of, co of course, there, there is plenty of uh, small projects, but uh, today I want to emphasize on some of um, them you all know. Twitter, it's, I believe, the most uh, referenced sample of uh, how PWA could improve uh, both um, business experience and um, users' experience. So you see that um, first two points are about uh, making our clients happier, Twitter clients happier. Second two points uh, about uh, making Twitter and Twitter developers happier, right? So many, many cool, shiny numbers. Next. Uber. So if you go to m.uber.com, you'll get progressive web app, and they call this Moober. Also, quite exciting that they fit all core functionality into just 50K. Just it's something not totally not possible for native apps, right? And uh, it's again, it's for users f with low networks or with uh, ex uh, extremely expensive uh, data plans. There are plenty of countries where you. Uh, pay really serious money to download to install the native app. Lancome, this uh, fashion brand, they decided that, hey folks, instead of creating native app, let's try to go for PWA. And they won, after all. So um, maybe, maybe you know, these um, numbers are not so exciting, like on Twitter, right? Like not not 70 percent, not 80 percent, but imagine how much money did they save on not creating native apps, and they don't need to support them uh, after all, right? So, and uh, in most cases, uh, again, uh, native versus mobile. In most cases, your service, your company will have some kind of uh, web. Um, service anyway, right? So why not to use uh, the single code base? 
And there are plenty of other interesting samples. And uh, believe me, each of them contains uh, quite uh, in interesting numbers in terms of uh, what uh, they saved on Go PWA instead of mobile. OK, let's uh, dedicate our last section to some uh, future, to some uh, predictions. And uh, we have some. Folks from Gartner, they expect that in two years we replace half of, uh, say, non-specialized mobile apps, right, that don't require some very specific hardware features and uh, don't require, say, full performance, right? But on the other hand, for real performance, we have uh, WebAssembly, which also uh, um, gains popularity nowadays, and uh, maybe this number will be even more. Folks from Forrester, they uh, invite us to invest some money into exploration the, of the new ways how to go mobile first. To be honest, I don't uh, know where to spend this uh, amount of money because actually we already invented this, right? It's, progress it's called progressive abuffs. Just go and start implementing. Um, the last prediction by, uh, by some unknown uh, consultancy, uh, Maxim. I, I, I don't uh, um, name any dates here, so I am safe. But what I say, today we have mobile applications, we have desktop applications, and we have progressive web apps. What will happen after all? I believe uh, this one. This will be just a web application. This is my personal uh, proposal, my personal assumption. Some useful links. This is Slack team I organized uh, one year ago. Now uh, we have um, more than 1.5 thousand folks there, including people from uh, major browsers and uh, major libraries like, like Workbox. Uh, so just go and communicate. Just go and ask your questions about progressive apps. Just share your experience. And my wildest dream for this autumn is to organize this kind of conference, Progressive Web Conf, uh, where I invite uh, all the browser reps uh, sit all together and, and developers uh, from from development community and uh, maybe uh, representatives from large customers, and uh, we'll decide where to go, where to go next, how to align these uh, efforts to have a positive question on uh, answer on my um, question, which is title of my session, is a new cross-platform development era coming? And I want to believe that, yes. On that, thank you very much. Спасибо большое. Now your questions, and let me move to something yes, useful. The limitops, yes, if we could just plug in the thing, because I have like 4% left. That would be very cool. So please join me for a little talk. OK, so the future looks bright after all, like at least according to Maxime Consultancy. That <laughs> yeah. sounds great. Um, we have a few questions. I'm going to jump right in, because we have one from Olga. Uh, I've heard many times that web-based applications are not real applications. Uh, from different people, when they hear it's web, they cringe. Because you know, native is always better. Because when we talk about web becoming better, the platform becoming better, uh, we also need to keep in mind that, of course, the native platforms are becoming better. It's not like they're waiting, doing nothing all the time, right? Um, and I think that personally, I think that this is like a fight that's just ridiculous because there are many advantages and disadvantages in both. But how would you convince, convince these people to get on board, so to invest into a progressive web app instead of? Android app and iOS app, or do we need all of them? A very simple uh, answer on this. Just try Twitter Lite on your Android device, and uh, you, you, will, you will get this feeling that uh, maybe this PWA is more native-like mm -hmm. rather than native app itself. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, it's, this web platform is under constant improvement, so we'll have all these smooth uh, animations and fast networking and uh, pretty much everything. Yeah, because there is also, I think, PWA rocks. 
or PWA stats, yes. where there's a collection of ongoing case studies uh, that prove that you know you build a mm -hmm. progressive web app and then um, you see some remarkable results. So that's pretty pretty cool. Um, and also, I think at this point we're getting really to the point where it's really difficult to distinguish between native web and web app anyway. Where you can even pull out a website and add it to the doc uh, system, well, the system system doc. So it's it actually acts like app, and it's faster, and you don't need to download huge bundles from App Store and stuff. Um, so you think that every web app should be progressive web app by default? Uh, no, no, no. I, um, I'm, I, I don't like you know this uh, say. Um, bold, but it's my job to bring it up. Uh, bold, yeah. No, no. Um, just be flexible. Just, just uh, have a look at uh, customer needs. That the answer is simple. And um, mobile native apps, oh, definitely, they, they will never disappear, right? So they will always have uh, a niche for, 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 for them. So uh, mobile developers, uh, no, no worries. No, no, no need for you to uh, go update <laughs> your CVs. So it's fine. That's all fine. <laughs> so far. Uh, but essentially, whenever you're working on a new product, for example, there are so many, again, frameworks, tools. Mm. Mm. Uh, you can choose if you go native, if you go progressive web app. So what would be your strategy to just choose one? Like, I mean, you need to have some sort of, a, uh, I guess, roadmap in mind. So given that this problem is working in this context and we have this particular situa situation, we need to invest into PWA or native. When would you decide to go one way or another? How do you know? Do you mean um, both in terms of frameworks that you're betting mm -hmm. on and in terms of platforms? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, about platforms, uh, again, just um, have a brainstorm about uh, what does your user really need from your web app? Um, and how much money could you invest on this after all, right? Because um, if you go native, this totally different layer level of investments, both in creating and supporting this. Uh, PWA is much leaner in, in that sense. And about frameworks, it's it's totally up to you. So uh, after all, uh, the the final goal is to have JavaScript, right? Hey, choose your uh, favorite framework, framework of the week. Uh, use JavaScript. Use TypeScript. Use CoffeeScript. Use use whatever you want. Okay. Um, well, at the same time, if you look into again App Store, for example, there is a, some sort of a quality control mm -hmm. right involved, where there is a moderation. When well, we're talking about progressive web apps. Boom, I'm here, download me, and I'm done. Um, so do you think that we, I mean, we can obviously do whatever we want with JavaScript, right? And those progressive web apps can essentially do also whatever they want. We can just misuse service workers' cache in any way we want. They are limited, but we could do everything. Uh, and the same way, we could potentially run some sort of you know, cryptocurrency mining, all this stuff. Do you think we need, do we need some sort of an ecosystem for progressive web apps in the same way we have it for Again, uh, with Google Play and Store and um, Apple Store. That, that's really interesting question, and uh, yeah, it could it could open totally totally separate discussion. So my personal feeling is, um, yeah, we are developers, so we are responsible for this uh, like level some some level of quality, right? And you know, uh, even uh, like moderators of uh, app stores, they will not fix your bugs, right? So they will check that some base security rules are not... Uh, like the privacy is all right, and yeah, 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 hopefully, yeah. And things like that. Uh, yeah. But your bugs are just, just your bugs. And about all these, say, malware functions, mm -hmm. which you might inject in progressive app, it's a question of trust of, of your, your customers to you. In, in general, yes, it's, uh, it might be possible to do some bad stuff in your service worker to some extent again. Uh, so browser vendors, they try to limit all, this, uh, all these possibilities. Yep. Uh, but yes, just, just, just create a quality software. So the answer is simple. We definitely don't need a kind of a global moderator for this progressive app. And I can uh, say what uh, folks from Microsoft do. Uh, so I already mentioned that they have this uh, Windows Store where they put some quality progressive web apps yes, uh, right. implicitly. So just imagine one day you wake up and uh, you got 10,000 more customers, more, more, more users. So what happened? Your app got to Microsoft Store. And they do some uh, quality Assurance. checks. Quality checks. Uh, maybe, maybe it's uh, very basic again, but 
also it, it, it's there. Plus, we have uh, really nice tools to audit, to lint, like Lighthouse, like Sonarwell. So all we, we have all the tools. Let's just use them. So that sounds like a promise and like uh, we're looking at a bright future. So we'll with this in mind, we'll that's I think it's a great ending for for the yeah. day. So thank you so much for being here. Looking My forward pleasure. to see what's coming next. Okay.